वेलकम टू हार्ड एट इंजीनियर डॉट कॉम आई एम वरुण पटेल इन दिस वीडियो यू विल लर्न अबाउट मोस्ट कॉमन क्वेश्चन रिगार्डिंग पाइपिंग दैट यू मे फेस ड्यूरिंग द इंटरव्यू यू विल लर्न अबाउट दिस क्वेश्चन वॉट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन द मशीन बोल्ड एंड स्टड बोल्ड वॉट इज द थम रूल टू कैलकुलेट स्पेनर साइज फॉर द गिवन बोल्ड वॉट इज स्ट्रीम ट्रेसिंग Which piping item will you drop down before conducting flushing and hydro test? Why do we provide a dampener in the piping of reciprocating pump? Why do we provide full bore wall in connecting pipeline of launcher and receiver? What should be the relative hardness between RTJ gasket and flange groove? Why do we provide drip leg in steam line? What is the normal upstream and downstream state length of the orifice flow meter? What do you mean by composite flange? So please watch this video till the end and don't forget to subscribe to my channel because that way you will get regular updates on new video. You can subscribe right now by just clicking subscribe button on your screen. So let's start with first questions. What is the difference between a machine bolt and stud bolt? This is sometimes confusing, especially for newcomers. Bolt and stud are very frequently used in the flange joint. So some people use this term interchangeably, but that is not correct. Machine bolt has a head on one side and nut on other side. But stud bolt has a threads on full body and has a nut on both sides. In the image, you can see the machine bolt and stud. Normally, in a piping, machine bolts are used with non-metallic piping such as GRE, GRP and HDP. For metallic piping, stud bolts are used. Second question. What is the thumb rule to calculate spanner size for a given bolt? A standard chart is available that shows the size of the given bolt and corresponding spanner size. Here you can see the same. But if this chart is not available, in that case, you can use thumb rule to get the spanner size. Approx spanner size is 1.5 times the diameter of the bolt. Third question is, what is stream tracing? As the name suggests, it is a tracing of a stream provided to the process line. In a process plant, certain fluid such as fuel oil and intermediate feed pipeline that carries viscous fluids need constant heating to maintain the flow in the line otherwise this fluid get thicker and can jam the line to prevent this constant heating of the line is required in the image below you can see that small tubes are attached to the main process pipeline these tubes are known as a tracing line and steam is passed through it continuously to keep the main process line hot. Once tracing is done, the pipeline is insulated to preserve the heat loss as you can see in the last image. Fourth question. Which piping item will you drop down before conducting flushing and hydro test? When you perform hydro test or do line flushing, debris such as pipe rust, welding slag, sand, will move and it may get stuck inside the instrument and valve. This will create a problem in their function. So any item that may get impacted by this type of debris must need to be dropped while performing flushing and hydro test. Items like control valve, orifice plate, rotometers, safety valve, thermo wells are dropped or replaced with temporary pipe spool before hydro test. Fifth question. Why do we provide a dampener in piping of reciprocating pump? To answer this question, you should know that the functioning of reciprocating pump. Unlike centrifugal pump, in reciprocating pump, fluid get compressed in a fixed volume. Here you can see how it works. Now due to this, pulse-like effect will create in the pipeline. This will damage the line. To prevent this, dampener is installed with the pump which act as a buffer and absorb the high pressure pulse and release the pressure when it is low. This way constant pressure is maintained in the line. Sixth question. 
Why do we provide full bore wall in connecting pipeline of launcher and receiver? There are two types of wall available. Here in the image you can see them both. The first is reduced bore and second is full bore. The main difference you can see in the image, it is basically an internal diameter of the wall. In the case of full bore wall, the diameter of wall passage is the same as pipeline. Now launcher and receiver are used to launch peak. Peaking is an activity that used to clean the line and also to inspect the line with the help of intelligent peak. Here you can see the peak. To pass this peak through the pipeline without being stuck at wall, you have to use full bore wall. Seventh question. What should be the relative hardness between the RTJ gasket and flange groove? In the image, you can see the RTJ flange and gasket. Now the material of gasket should be soft enough to set inside the flange serration to prevent leakage. And at the same time, it should not damage the flange face when you tighten the flange. To achieve this, the slightly soft gasket material is used than the flange material. The hardness of the gasket will be 20 to 50 BHN less than the hardness of the flange. This will ensure smooth setting of the gasket in the flange face. 8th question. Why do we provide drip leg in steam line? There is a chance of steam condensation inside the steam line. If you don't remove this condensate from the line, it will create water hammer inside the line and it damages the piping system. To avoid this, you have to remove the condensate continuously from the system. Drip leg is provided to remove the condensate when there is a rise in the piping along the flow direction. Here in the image, you can see the drip leg. Ninth question. What is the normal upstream and downstream straight length of orifice flow meter? Orifice flow meter is used to measure the flow of the pipeline. To get an accurate result, steady flow is necessary. Any piping component will create some amount of turbulence in the line. To avoid this, only straight line is preferred in upstream and downstream of orifice meter. The minimum straight length preferred in upstream is 15 times the diameter of the pipe and in downstream it is 5 times the diameter of the pipe. The last question of this video is what do you mean by composite flange? The flange that is made of more than one material is called composite flange. See the image of the lap flange. Lap flange is having a two component, a stub end and the loose backing flange. Stub end is butt welded to the pipe and backing flanges freely move over the pipe. A backing flange can be of different material than the stub material and generally of carbon steel to save the cost. This is the end of the video. I hope that you have learned from this video. In the next video, I will explain to you about few more important questions related to piping. So keep on checking my YouTube channel for new video. Visit my website heartattengineer.com for free study material and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to get regular updates on new video. Please like and share my video with your friends. If you want to request a video, please write in the comment. See you soon. Goodbye. Take care.